Now, you're probably wondering why I'm doing more about the land before time. It's just that this movie really fascinates me. As a kid, I had nothing to do with the series. I remember the TV show, and that's literally about it. And watching the movie, I was pretty surprised by how good it was, but by the kind of weird continuity in it. And of course, further research proved there was a lot cut out of this movie at one stage or another. I have already done some videos covering this, but this is pretty much a master video for what is completely known at this time as more information has been made available. And showcases images, I'm not using actual footage from the movie this time, and I'll just kind of discuss my theories on what's going on with this, because there's not a lot of documentation of what happened in the editing process, unfortunately. All we do have is what little survived in forms of, like, posters and trailers that escaped that was cut later on. And some of the stuff with the soundtrack does indicate there was two separate cuttings of the movie. So, of course, it's time to talk about The Land Before Time again. Now, there's only one scene I know of that wasn't actually animated that was originally planned to be included. And if you see anybody cite this claiming that they have seen the uncut version of the movie, you will know they are lying. It's the Oasis scene. From what I know about it, it was originally... The whole idea was it happened before they found what they thought was the Great Valley, where they found a source of food and water. There's one species of dinosaurs guarding the water and one guarding the food, and they won't share because they're different species. The scene was never actually animated, and all that's really known about it is that it was included in a couple books. It's a kind of weird scene, and I can understand why they took it out, because it's, one, it just shows the dinosaurs are super racist, and it doesn't really fit in that well. And two, they could just steal the food, honestly. They could wait for their dinosaurs to sleep. It's not that smart of a scene. And it didn't, it wouldn't fit in. The movie was already running a bit long, from what I understand, because a lot of the cuts made in it do seem to have actually been just to trim down the, the runtime of the flick. But that's the first scene I know of that there are no pictures associated with, and you will never see, because it was never made. Now, of course, the first big scene, which I have covered, obviously, a lot, is the sharp tooth fight. Now, I didn't really know much about the structuring in the beginning with the chase scene originally, but I found recently, I will link to the Lost, Me Lost Media Wiki page on this, which I contribute a bunch to that as a link further onto the article where I found a storyboard from this. And it shows the original layout of the fight, which was changed a lot, honestly. Now, we're all familiar how it opens with them playing in, like, a swamp, and Sharptooth shows up. But it's really scrambled in the movie when you watch it. And if you actually read the storyboard, I'm not going to put, I'm only going to put, like, two pictures of that up on here, just because it's not mine. And just to show that it does exist, really. Is that, well, sir, the two dinosaurs notice that the ground is shaking. The frogs disappear, and then you see Sharptooth. He rams into the tree. They try to run away. They slip, nearly get stomped on. They run back under the tree to try to climb up the top. He comes down and tries to grab them, and they run away. There are colorized pictures existing from some of these scenes, suggesting that the movie was completely colorized and finished in a completely uncut form, albeit without a soundtrack at one stage, due to the fact that none of these scenes fit in with the music anymore. It's un I can understand why they changed this, because well, the first complaint they had with this movie is that it was too scary. The kids would be running out of the theater screaming, even though I'm going to argue that kids could probably take it. And this was probably one of the first scenes actually cut in the first run of edits before the soundtrack was done. I can understand why it was done at the same time, though it's kind of frustrating that they didn't say more of it. And the fact that it looks like the movie was finished, except for the music, when they started decided to start cutting stuff out. The next scene that nearly got cut, actually, was the death of Littlefoot's mother. I have no idea why they thought to cut it out, because the movie would make no sense without it. But they actually had a child psychologist come in and take a look and edit the old Ruiter scene to try and lessen the blow of the death. Although that scene is stupid and doesn't work, because telling Littlefoot it's not his fault his mother died, even though it actually is his fault because he ran away and blatantly put himself in danger, kind of doesn't make the scene any better. It's also quite notable in the 1989 VHS release, which is the earliest release of the movie, pretty much. The scene is a lot cleaner and crisper looking than the rest of it without any haze or fog that the rest of the movie has, suggesting that it wasn't even fully animated, really. That they 
did the base outline of it and then bothered to blend it in. I don't know what other scenes were cut out before the soundtrack was made because it's really hard matching a lot of this stuff up. There were obviously edits made to the scene where they find the green food, but there's not a lot about it that we know, know of right now. There's one that was obviously cut for time, which of course I will show, and because I will talk about that scene later. And the main scene that I'm pretty sure got trimmed was probably the scene involving Spike when he was born. The scene with Spike as a baby is one I really don't get from taking out because it actually kind of would have added to the story and there is actually continuity errors because of its removal. Essentially after they found the egg they were kind of Sarah didn't want them to keep Spike. They wanted she wanted to abandon him because he'd be too slow and he ate too much. Eventually Ducky figured out to lead him with Barry to do show them doing the movies and the narrator kind of hints at the scene. But it's pretty notable that afterwards, right before they find the green food, Sarah's actually missing in that scene for a good chunk of the scene and then shows up right at the end, suggesting that she actually might have left the group. They never really explain why she just pops up out of nowhere, and it's a, just a weird error in the movie that is a result of this cutting. Now the green food scene, as I promised, did have a little bit of video which did survive from the cutting, which was a really weird and pointless scene, which I can understand why they took them out. See for yourself. Of course, if you've seen my other videos on the subject, you will have seen that I did put it back in the movie. It happens right before um, Tea Tree falls from the tree, and it's just a, it's a bit of filler that shows the bond between them, but doesn't really go anywhere. And of course, the picture showing right now would have been cut off a bit higher at the bottom originally. I've seen black and white stills of it from the press release that are set up differently than that. So it does show that some of these are actually just animation cells and not actual footage clippings. And I can understand why why that one scene was taken out, but there's another that's really obvious that a lot of people don't bring up. Right after you see Sarah butting her head, trying like Littlefoot throwing the leaves down at her, she backs up to hit it again, and then you just see her storming off, yelling at them. And it becomes really obvious that she probably caught them throwing the leaves down and got offended. They took out a lot of scenes like that with Sarah just being a bitch towards the rest of them. Like, really noticeably, there's a scene I brought up in one of my other videos where I have no idea what happened there. But right after they find the rock that looks like a long neck, and the movie just kind of stops and fades out and you, right in the middle of the animation. And it's obvious that something should have happened there because the group isn't that joyful afterwards during the journey. It seems like something may have happened. And the movie doesn't do any other fade outs like that. I have no idea why they chose to do that. It looked bad. And if you're going to cut something out, you could have done it a bit better than that, you know? It was probably just to keep the runtime a bit faster due to the fact it did take a bit out of the movie. And I'm pretty sure, other than that, there were a few other edits made before the soundtrack was actually finished. I've not really noticed a lot with like the scenes with the sharp tooth fight at the end. All of that seems to be mostly intact. Well, not intact, but it seems like the soundtrack for it is more intact than it is. Like, there's not huge ch chunks taken out. So you will probably find that none of that was touched until the soundtrack was made. And that's when the second batch of cuts came around and when the movie kind of got the short end of the stick. The main thing that bugs me about the second round of cuts they did to this movie is that the soundtrack was finished and they probably thought that was going to be the final version. I have no idea why there were more cuts made, honestly. Because it just kind of comes out of nowhere when you're listening to the soundtrack and you hear pieces you've never heard before. Or at least with the other scenes, the music didn't go along with them. And now it just kind of doesn't work any longer. It sounds weird, it sounds awkward. And even if they matched up a lot better than they did in the Black Cauldron, which actually had notable skips, apparently, in the theatrical release, it's still a bit off, you know? And the first scene that comes to mind for this is, again, the sharp tooth fight, a scene which they just couldn't leave alone. There's an entire 10 second gap of footage, which is missing. It sounds, when you listen to it, you hear the mother's theme, you hear like the fight theme, 
And it does make sense of why you see them running, and that when the earthquake starts, all of a sudden the mother's gone, she's laying down again, and the, and the kids are separated from her. And I've heard people claim who apparently saw this in theater, which is a lie because it was never released in theater, before it was completely cut down, that the fight actually went on into the swamp. There is that tiny video clip I just showed, which seems to suggest this, but I think the best bet is that, like, uh, Sharp Tooth got up again, attacked the mother, which explains why she has that tear on the back of her neck later on. And then she just knocks him down again, and the kids got separated during the fight. It's only about ten seconds, and at least they did a really good job cutting it out. There's only a slight error, with like, well, there's two slight errors that come from it. Picture on screen right now, I have no idea. It looks like a fake. One thing for sure, if you're looking up for, you know, cut images from the movie, most of the stuff you'll see are fakes made with animation cells from other movies, with the ones from this layered on top. It's just kind of a weird thing that I've noticed. And that about ends that for the sharp two scene for the cutting of it. For other scenes, I don't really know what was cut after the soundtrack was done, because it can be very difficult to match up with scenes in the movie. I'm not sure why it's so hard, because the movie kind of has music all over it, but sometimes it just doesn't add up. The other big edit that I know of for sure is the ending of the movie. Because the ending got completely shuffled around. And there's, like, maybe two clips that suggest what happens, and there's quite a few pictures of the original scene where they find the Great Valley. Let's talk about that. Now, as I've covered before, after the group splits up, Littlefoot was supposed to find the valley alone. Why they changed this, I honestly can't tell you. I think it actually would have made for much more interesting storytelling, and it wouldn't have seen as nearly convenient when they just kind of stumble upon the Great Valley at the end. But they did change it. This is evident in the soundtrack. There's a large portion which it was never heard before in this scene, and there are a ton of leaked images from this ending. And of course, the three that you'll be seeing while I'm talking about this are just scenes that our little foot himself at the valley. There's not much known of what happened when he was there, except that he's shown playing in the waterfalls, and it's theorized that his mother probably spoke to him again at that moment. Although, well, this ending still exists in the movie, although it was edited in later on. When you see the, like, the ghost cloud of his mother show up when he's at the water, like the area where they beat Sharp to, you'll notice that none of the others are there, the colors are kind of different. They're, it looks hotter in that scene than it originally did. It's not as bright. And there's just kind of something weird about the way it looks, because that is a chunk of the original ending, which they just edited in. Now, what happened after he got there and played in the waterfalls, he probably went back to save his friends. Which, of course, where you get to the scene where they're at the volcano, just kind of out of nowhere. And it's also quite notable that they reference at like, at the end of the scene with, like, the tar, how Sarah feels bad about not going the right way to the valley, and then they're just kind of conveniently there. It's a really odd thing that they left in, because it obviously suggests that Littlefoot blatantly told them he was at the Great Valley, and that they probably had to turn back and go his way, originally, which was completely scrapped. Like, they just kind of went to her going outside in what appears to be a rainstorm, to all of them being at the pond, but where Sharp Tooth shows up, and it's just a kind of odd thing. I don't know how much was actually cut out of that for time, because honestly, the 11-minute estimation everyone comes up with is bad, because they don't take into account the fact the old Rooter scene isn't actually part of the movie originally, and that there's way more to this movie that was cut out. And it doesn't take a lot of, you know, brain power to spot the cuts in the movie, because they're very obvious. Now, of course, after Littlefoot goes back to his friends and the Sharp Tooth fight happens, there were more cuts. And luckily, we do actually have a bit of footage from what was taken out. <laughs> Judging by the fact that there is footage of the scene, it was probably originally going to be left completely intact with how they originally beat Sharp Tooth, and was then cut down for being too scary, which I can kind of understand what they were going for this time. 
because he is trying to kill them, at the very least, so it's something that kids might get scared by. It's, I don't know, putting this thing together is really hard, because it looks like they did so much cutting and rearranging that the only way to know what was going on would actually be to see the storyboard, which I doubt we'll ever see the entire storyboard for all the stuff cut out of this movie, unfortunately. But we do know a little bit that there was more scenes with them, probably at least two different instances of them having to actually bait Sharptooth to get him to come down into the water. And that the scene with him sinking was considerably longer as well. A lot of people claim they have seen this uncut, and part of me wonders if maybe they saw there might, might have been an advanced screening that still had some of this intact, but since there are no images, I do not believe it. Of course, there was also the rest of the original ending, or the, the entire gang was there when Petrie was saved, when like he escapes the water, and then they go back as a group, because he shows them the way of the Great Valley, cause, you know, right there. Which again, there are a ton of stills of, and with this I can actually kind of see why they might have changed it, because it's frame by frame exact to when he runs into it the first time except with the rest of the characters, and that could look a little bit lazy. However, it's still weird, all the stuff they cut out of this movie, and how it still managed to be a really good movie, but it does look really awkward when you're watching it, and you can see all these weird little cuts where characters appear or disappear, and they really should, should have done us a favor and at least saved a copy of this movie uncut. With the Black Cauldron, there's actually a black and white negative of it still in existence that's completely unedited from the original R-rated plan. Unfortunately, Disney will never release it because all Disney does now is crap related to Frozen, so I don't think we will ever see a reprisal of that movie. And with this one, they apparently destroyed the original footage that was cut out. I've heard people claim that uncut copies have been sent to other countries and aired on TV, that they've they own the old, the old VHS tapes, and they're all uncut, which is a lie, because all the tapes are the exact same runtime. And until there is definitive proof that a version of this movie exists with less cutting, this will be probably lost forever. They could really easily, if you ask me, restore footage. There are storyboards out there, there's footage that exists, there are pictures. And if you wanted to, and were a good animator, you could redo scenes of this movie and put them back in. But since Universal has such a death grip on the rights to their movies, nobody will ever get a chance to remake this probably. It's a real shame that Don Blue, who made all these really amazing movies, could never get any of them through without having them butchered or cut or have something happen to them. Secrets of Nim, I think, is probably the only movie that, like that in, Amer in American Tale, probably the only movie that he did that were dark and gritty like that, that actually survived the cutting process, because they weren't cut. Everything else was edited out for the other ones. This, All Dogs Go to Heaven, they both had some pretty bad cuts to them. And it's a real shame that it happened to this movie, because at least this one's really good. All Dogs Go to Heaven was kind of crap, so, you know, I don't like it. But this movie's really amazing. The soundtrack's really good, it's a shame that a bunch of that had to be sacrificed just to please George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, who thought it had to be super kid-friendly. As it is, it's still a pretty dark movie. It has nothing on something like The Brave Little Toaster, but it's a really good flick, and I just wish they hadn't destroyed the only uncut versions of it. Of course, as more information of this becomes available, I probably won't be doing more videos, because... It's a lot of the content on my channel is this movie right now. And, well, I do plan on making a series with this title. And just doing a, ton, a bunch on movies that were cut that we will never see uncut copies of. Or it's very unlikely that we will. I do want to stop talking about Line Before Time all the time on here. So, of course, I will put a link in, as I said, to Lost Media Wiki. I do a lot of work on there, like... Seriously, ask me about what articles I've done. I have a bunch of stuff on there that I've either contributed to or have written. And I can cover movies. Like, if you know movies that were cut that not a lot of people talk about, I will gladly discuss them on here as long as you can get me information. Because it's just a really weird thing 
how much effort goes into films, and they just all cut out and destroyed. So with that said, that's really all I have to say about The Land Before Time. There were two different edits, we know of a bunch of scenes that were taken out, and there's a bunch of mysterious things in the movie which suggest more cuts. And ultimately we still got a good movie, but it probably would have been a little bit better if maybe a bit longer. Like, not longer in a good way either, if it had been left, left uncut. Hopefully I'll be getting my review of Komodo up soon. I don't really want to watch the movie right now, so we'll see what happens. And I'll get back to you with whatever my next video is.